properties of a molecule depend on its shape and the nature of its bonds. And in this lesson, we're going to begin our look at the VESPAR theory, which is an acronym for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory, which is a model for predicting the three-dimensional structure of molecules. VESPAR is perhaps best introduced if we imagine tying the ends of balloons together. If you tie two balloons together, they'll look like the picture on the left. If you tie three together, they will push each other apart in sort of a Mercedes-Benz symbol shape. If you add a fourth balloon, you'll get kind of a tripod on the bottom with one balloon sticking up. Add a fifth balloon and you get a top and a bottom balloon. You might call these the axial balloons. And then a Mercedes-Benz symbol here around the middle. And then if you add a sixth balloon, you could say, well, you've got a balloon that's on top, one that's on the bottom, one that's on the left, one that's on the right, one that's in the front, and one that's in the back. I represent these different three-dimensional shapes with stick figures. These five shapes all have names that you are going to have to memorize at some point. The one on the left we call linear. The next one is called trigonal planar. In other words, all of these atoms are in a plane. The next one is tetrahedral. That's an easy one. This next one is trigonal bipyramidal, and the last one is octahedral. And you might think, well, there are six balloons there. Why would we call it octahedral rather than perhaps hexahedral? Well, if you connect each of these balloons with a triangular face and count the faces, there would be eight faces. So that's how the name came into being. If you've never seen these little stick figures before, a straight line means that that is in the plane of the board or the plane of the computer screen. If you have the little dark triangle, that means that that bond is coming out towards you. And if it's a dotted line or a dashed line, that means that that bond is going away from you. It's further into the board than just the middle of the board. And if you look at those diagrams long enough, they actually do start to make sense. You can get a three-dimensional feel from them. Bond angles are the angles made by the lines joining the nuclei of a molecule's atoms. So on the left, we have carbon dioxide. And in the middle, we have methane. And on the right, let's see, if the black atoms are carbon atoms, and the reds are oxygens, and the whites are hydrogens, at the very least, we can figure out that we have one carbon, two hydrogens, and an oxygen. I don't expect you to know this at this point, but that is the compound formaldehyde, which is the common name. It's also called methanol. In any case, the bond angle of the two bonds in carbon dioxide are oriented at 180 degrees to each other. And on the right, these bonds in formaldehyde, or methanol, have a 120 degree bond angle. I expect that you would be able to grasp that rather quickly. And then this one in the middle is an important one for tetrahedral shapes, which is what methane is. 109.5 degrees. That one I expect my students to memorize as well. An electron domain is a region in which at least two electrons are found. Electron domains tend to repel each other because they're all negatively charged. A clump of electrons will tend to repel another clump of electrons. A bonding domain is two to six electrons that are shared by two atoms, and they form a covalent bond. If two electrons are shared, that's a single bond. If four electrons are shared, that's a double bond. And if six electrons are shared, that's a triple bond. A non-bonding domain is two electrons that are located on a single atom. These are also called lone pairs, or unshared pairs. For example, in ammonia, which has the formula NH3, and that Lewis structure, there are three bonding domains and one non-bonding domain. 
you can see here that we have one non-bonding domain, or one lone pair, and then one, two, three bonding domains. Four electron domain total, three of them bonding, and these domains arrange themselves so as to minimize their repulsions. The ammonia molecule takes a generally tetrahedral geometry. Four domains results in a tetrahedral geometry. The electron domain geometry is one of five basic arrangements of domains. Sometimes the electron domain geometry is shortened to just geometry, and the five basic arrangements are those shapes that were mentioned a couple of slides ago. Linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramidal, and octahedral. The electron domain geometry depends only on the total number of electron domains, not the kind of each domain. In other words, it doesn't matter with regard to electron domain geometry how many bonding and how many non-bonding domains we have. Just the total number determines what the electron domain geometry is. And that number is associated with one of those five basic arrangements. Two domains total, linear. Three domains total, trigonal planar. Four domains, tetrahedral. Five, trigonal bipyramidal. And six, octahedral. Now the molecular geometry, or the shape of the molecule, describes the orientation of the atoms in space. So the shape, or the molecular geometry, does depend on how many of each kind of domain. Are they all bonding domains? Are there two bonding and two non-bonding, etc.? This is the topic for another lesson, so we're not going to go into those details here. But if we look at the four molecules at the bottom of this screen, if we look at ammonia, for example, if we count up the total domains, we'll count four. Three of them bonding, one of them non-bonding. So the electron domain geometry for ammonia is tetrahedral. For sulfur dioxide, which is in the lower left, there are one, two, three domains. Therefore, the electron domain geometry is trigonal planar. For sulfur hexafluoride, there are six domains. It has a geometry, or an electron domain geometry, of octahedral. And this is phosphorus pentachloride. If you count up the domains, you will see that they're all bonding domains. But there are a total of five of them. And so the electron domain geometry would be trigonal bipyramidal. Let's summarize our introduction to VESPAR. 1. VESPAR stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. It allows us to predict three-dimensional shapes of molecules. 2. The bond angle is the angle made by a molecule's bonds, with the central atom as the vertex. The bond angles to memorize are 180 degrees, 120 degrees, and 109.5 degrees. 3. An electron domain is a clump of two or more electrons. Bonding domains are found between two atoms. Non-bonding domains are attached to only one atom. And 4. The electron domain geometry depends only on the total number of domains. The molecular geometry depends on the type of domain and how many of each.